Hello everybody, I am Sarah Cray and I teach watercolor and today we are doing our Let's Make Art Matter for our The Witching Hour watercolor gouache box. <laughs> um, our recipient this month is Linda. Now Linda has been a longtime member of our llama community. She encourages her granddaughter to paint with her over Zoom and she loves to paint and um, she's uh, just recently had surgery on her spine and is recovering from that. And um, I believe the surgery went well, but she's just ready to get back up. She's ready to to be able, she's a caregiver. She wants to go back to work. Um, she just, um, her husband nominated her and I thought that that was so sweet. And um, we just wanted to send Linda a big art hug from the Llama community and let her know that we're thinking about her and um, we hope that she'll um, get back up on her feet soon. Okay? Sounds good. Now, um, for this postcard project, I am going to attempt to paint Harvest Gnomes. I've never painted gnomes before, so we're gonna do this together. And that's what I try and do with these Let's Make Art Matters, is not only are we trying to send someone a little art hug, but I wanna walk you through my process of how I would approach a painting from start to finish. And I think the more that you can see that, you can see how um, attainable it is for you and that it's good for you to see in real time how to make decisions and just like go for it. So then you can start making your own paintings without tutorials. That will make me sad one day, but that's the goal. The birds gotta leave the nest. The birds gotta leave the nest sometime. Okay, so we're using gouache. I have all six colors from my The Witching Hour gouache box. Um, I have more my four paintbrushes handy. I don't know which ones I'm going to use yet, but it's nice to have all of your supplies ready to go. Of course, you can paint something totally different or use the, whatever supplies that you have. So I'm gonna start with putting a background in. It's always nice to get a nice clean background. I'm gonna go with tan. So I'm gonna take some yellow ochre and some white and maybe more white. Let's do some orange. And this is, I don't, I don't know. That made it too peachy. I don't really like that. So let's grab some turquoise. You could have just done yellow ochre and white, but now I'm in this mixing. Okay, I added more yellow ochre. Let's see. More white, maybe. You can use just water to whiten it down or white paint. Just taking my white, my one inch wash and just doing a tan background. And of course, of course, of course, I like a vignette. So I'm gonna take just pure yellow ochre and do the edges. So I put the paint in the corner first, wipe off the excess, and then just blend out. Kind of like a circular motion almost. Okay. Beautiful. Now we're gonna let this dry and I'm gonna think about what I want here. So I think I'm gonna do three gnomes. Now this is a small postcard. It's a four by six watercolor postcard. So we're gonna paint these tiny little gnomes. Um, and painting tiny is actually difficult. Some people think that painting tiny is easier, but actually it's harder because you have less room to create details, value shifts, all of that kind of stuff. You have to use fewer brush strokes because you're painting so small. But um, this is the size of our paper and I know that you guys can do hard things. So we're gonna just go for it anyway. So I'm gonna dry this. If you wanna use a pencil to kind of sketch out your gnomes first, um, that might be a good idea, or you can just go for it, it's up to you. Another option that you can do if you want to paint it bigger, and Michael, you tell me if we should do this. I can turn this vertically and just do one gnome. I like the threes. You like the three, okay. I think the nice thing about gnomes also is it's definitely okay if they look wonky, because they're gnomes. Yes. yes. The safety is built in. Okay, so then I'll keep the three going this way 
and um, and I'm just going to kind of start sketching and go for it. Now the beautiful thing is if you don't like your sketch, just paint over it in gouache and you have a fresh page. Okay, I'm actually wondering if this tan is too dark. Should I lighten it? Nope, we're committing. Okay, so to draw a gnome, it actually is just basic shapes. The first one we're gonna do is the hat, the triangle for the hat. So I'm gonna start here kind of on, I'm gonna like mentally separate my paper into three sections. And sometimes it's helpful, and I know it might sound silly, to be like, here's gonna be a gnome, here's gonna be a gnome, and here's gonna be a gnome. And that kind of gives you an idea of where to place these. Now for the hat, I'm gonna start kind of in the middle of my page because the hat is actually, I mean, depending on the gnome, sometimes <laughs> as long as the body, right? And you can make them shorter or smaller, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to do a line here with that curves up in the middle, just like that. And remember, I gotta do three of these. So sometimes even if you just take your finger and say, do three fit here? Ooh, that's kind of stretching it. So let's make this a little bit shorter over here. That feels better. And of course we're using gouache. So you can just, we're gonna paint over all these pencil lines. Then I'm going to do an oval for the nose. Okay. And the hat itself is gonna come up and it can be wonky. It can be wavy. It doesn't have to be a straight line. And I'm gonna have this kind of curve to the left. Okay. And then we're gonna do a beard. And the beard is gonna go like to the feet. Gnomes are all beard and hat. All beard, hat, and nose. And then the body, so I have like a triangle that's kind of rounded from the top here. The body is just going to be kind of like curved out like this. Okay? Okay. So it's just curved curve to the bottom. And I want you to pay attention to how, where your gnomes end from the top and the bottom. And we usually either want to have them even or have more room along the top. If you have more gap along the bottom, then your the composition is gonna feel off. So because my hat is so close to the top of this gnome, I'm gonna lengthen my body a little bit so there's not a huge gap. And then you just do ovals for the feet. Okay, and then this is where you decide, how do I wanna make this feel folly? Do I want it holding something? Do I want it just to be by itself with its arms down? Gnomes have different personalities, so it's up to you. I'm gonna add a pumpkin for this one. So to do a pumpkin, I'm just going to do an oval like so, right in the middle, right in front of it. And then you're gonna add ribs. So it's just gonna be curved to the left, and then in the middle it's more straight, and then curved to the right. Yep. A little stem. And maybe it's holding um, using like mittens. Mittens are easier than fingers. Love it. <laughs> you guys might be wondering how Sarah is so good at this first try. Um, it's kind of an unfair advantage because this is my general shape. <laughs> I actually have a gnome right in front of me that I get to. <laughs> Married right to one. Yep. And I carry pumpkins everywhere. So. Hey, just all the time. <laughs> with my mittens. <laughs> okay, so that's our first gnome and we're gonna sketch our second one. I'm gonna do the same thing, start with a hat. Again, paying attention to its width. Can I fit a third one there? Yes, I can. Um, do the nose and you can make the noses even bigger. Like you can learn from your first one and if some of the noses are bigger, some of the hats are different, that's okay. I actually think I wanna make this little one more squatty. So I'm gonna move the hat down because I think squatty gnomes are so cute. We call them short kings. Yes. And then this one, I'm gonna have the hat just kind of go straight up. Okay. <laughs> and then we'll do the beard. And then we'll do the body. The feet. And let's have this one whole, what about like a sunflower? So I'm gonna do a circle and yellow leaves, and this looks wonky, but remember, this is a sketch that I'm gonna paint over. And I want him to be wider. 
And if you don't feel like doing hands or arms, don't do hands or arms. It's, yeah. It's fine. It's not a big deal. <laughs> I like that guy so much. <laughs> okay, last one. Um, and I'm going to have this one be a little bit taller again. And maybe that's a bit close. So like so. Do the oval for the nose. I'm going to have this hat curve to the right. This is just the cutest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Aren't they cute? Like that. Then we'll do the beard. The body. And I am going quick. You might be like, whoa, 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 whoa. That is the point. You guys can do it. And then I'm going to have this one holding a cornstalk. So I'm going to do a little arm coming out. And ooh, let's see if I have enough room. Do you think I will? I think you got it. So I'm going to do the stalk. And then along the top, there are corn flowers, which are kind of like these wispy things. And then we have leaves. And then on those leaves, there are corn, which is just kind of like a pointy oval coming out. Cute. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Okay, now we get to do the fun part, which is we get to paint it. Now this is where you can really let your creativity and imagination run wild because you can change up the colors, you can do patterns, you can do polka dots, you can change what they're holding, you can do one. Any of these things are valid. I forgot to put shoes. There we go. Okay, so for this first one, I'm gonna have it hold. Let me tell you my thought process. You might say, where do I start painting on a drawing like this? It's with gouache, you paint from the underneath forward. So I would want to paint the beard, the body, the feet before I paint the pumpkin, okay? okay. Now Makes for the sense. hat, I'm gonna do an orange pumpkin. So should I do an orange hat? No, he needs a blue hat. A blue hat. Is turquoisey blue or should I make it kind of green? Ooh, yeah. I mean, it's turquoisey um, ball. Yeah. I mean, for gnomes it is. It's okay. well known in their culture. You it's know, well turquoise known. is fall. So I'm just going to take this turquoise blue. I'm going to paint the hat. <laughs> I'm so happy with this painting. <laughs> and as its inspiration, I approve. And I like my hat to feel like it's kind of fabric-y and loose, so it's going to be a little bit wonky. I <laughs> think so. Okay. okay. Rinse that. Now let's paint the white beard. So I'm going to get just pure white. And this is why I did a background is because I wanted the beards to be white mm. and I wanted that to stick out from the background. And because we're using gouache, which makes it easy to layer. So I, I'm not going to paint fully over the pumpkin, but I'll paint into the pumpkin. So there's no gap. So there's no gap. Exactly. Okay. And then maybe you see a little bit of the beard underneath. And we can decide later if we want to keep that or not. I feel like you should have done the beard first so the hat overlapped it. That's a good idea. I'll do that next time. Okay. And I probably could have done the outfit first too. Should I do like a brown for his? Yeah. What he's wearing? Yeah, earthy brown. So I'm going to mix black and brilliant orange together. Are gnomes magical? I don't know much about gnomes. I think so. Okay. In their own way. <laughs> I'm so happy. And you can paint over into the pumpkin. And we can add the mittens after. And honestly, that tan color works fairly well for the nose if you just want to keep it that. Or you can mix a little bit more white into the tan that's already on there.
add the nose. And then if you want like a little highlight curve, like a shine on it. Cute. Listen, one of these noses has to be red. Not full red, but a red Like a view. hint of red? Yeah. Okay, I love that. And then I'll just use black for the shoes. And I could just paint right over the brown. <laughs> Those got a little wonky. Let's... I'm just doing kind of like half circles. Just like that. Okay, now let's paint the pumpkin. I'm going to take Brilliant Orange. And basically, I'm just going to use my round six, and I'm just going to do curved lines to the left, and then to the right. And you can even leave little spaces in between, and that will actually make it easier for the viewer to see the shape. And then you kind of just curve out the bottom. <laughs> And then let's do a stem. Okay, maybe thicker. I'm doing another layer of blue. Okay, we're gonna leave that and then we'll come back to it to add mittens. Next one, I say we do an orange hat. Oh, but we're going to do the beard first, right? So you're going to do the shirt first, I thought. Shirt first. Let's have the middle one be all orange. Okay. What about that? Yeah. So I'm going to grab more orange. And maybe I'll mix a little bit of violet into my orange to get kind of a reddish for the shirt. And then the top can be pure brilliant. And if you wanted to, it could even be like overalls or something cute, you know? <laughs> that would be cute. Okay, we're gonna let that dry. I don't wanna do, I wanna make sure this is totally dry before I do the white. So even though I said I was gonna do the beard first, I'm gonna do the hat now. Wow. You could also like, I guess I could paint them simultaneously. I can move on to this one. Do it. This one I'll do pure orange. He works construction uh, in the evenings. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then we're going to do black shoes on all of them. I'm going to try and make them smaller this time. Kind of just poking up. You can see I'm not going, I'm like straddling the line between the ground and their outfit. Okay, now that's probably dry enough to do the white. And this is the nice thing about um, gouache is it dries really easy or fast. So you can just like go for it. You can even paint over the nose if you want and just like add it later. But if you're afraid to lose your sketch, then of course you can try and just paint around it. And then this guy. And because these are tiny, I'm not focusing too much on creating shadows or anything like this. If I were to do a full gnome painting larger, I would, you know, pay more attention to putting a shadow underneath the nose and that kind of stuff. Okay, I feel like I should do that first.
<laughs> and then I'm going to do just a brilliant orange highlight on this pumpkin. Maybe a brown hat for that bright gnome. Because this brown, I want it to like even out. Yeah. It's easy to tell which gnome has fashion sense. The one with the blue hat, you know? Obviously. It's a blue hat. I do feel like I need to put blue somewhere in the painting, though. Make that right hand orange gnome have him have blue gloves. Oh, good idea. Or blue corn. I'm just kidding. Blue <laughs> Okay, this one I was having a hold of sunflower. So let's put some brown in for the center of that. Is that white dry enough? Let's dry that white before I do that. And if you don't have gouache and you didn't get this box, you can still absolutely participate in this and send Linda a postcard, just email our customer happiness team at hello at letsmakeart.com and they will um, get you the information that you need to know. And you can totally do this in watercolors. You would just want to make sure that you're layering it in a way um, that will be... Light to dark. Light to dark, yes. So I'm going to do one layer of brown. And then let's do the noses. So I'm kind of really jumping around here and that's because I'm kind of waiting for different things to dry. I'm gonna add white to the tan I already have mixed on here. <laughs> okay. Listen, I want that pink nose. I oh need, yeah. I need some pink shading. Okay, let's see if I can do that because we don't have red, but I do have violet and orange, which does create a pink. I don't know if you'll be able to see it though that's the only thing because I have to like oh I could just add white paint to it Perfect. it's not much different than the tan I guess no it's not that's okay still cute <laughs> acceptable acceptable okay let's put in the stock so I'm gonna mix yellow ochre and blue together Get a green. And then for the leaves, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically do a thin line that goes up, start the curve, and then kind of like do a press push down to go, do a thicker leaf. And I don't have yellow, but I'm going to take yellow ochre. Ooh, this might not show up. Let's see. Oh, no. It you can see it. Yep. Add some corn, which is just kind of sticking out of those leaves. <laughs> just corn staff. <laughs> and we can do like a little love. Yep. Okay. We gotta finish that sunflower. I'm gonna do a more brown center. There we go. Then I'm gonna take my two and my yellow ochre. I'm just gonna do yellow all the way around. Just the thing with sunflowers is they have a nice big brown center. So you wanna make sure that your petals Are not bigger than the center if that makes sense mm -hmm. and again we don't have like a pure yellow for this so our 
colors are going to be slightly off. Your brand fills those gaps in, though. Yeah. You know? And then to really show that it's a sunflower, I'm actually going to take black, the darker center in the middle for that sunflower. Well, dang, that's adorable. Now, I love doing little fun details. So let's add that. Let's do a stripe. on this hat. And, oh, that got really thick. I wonder if I can just lift it up. Yep. Let's get less water. Just do a stripe. Okay, I still need gloves on this little guy. What if I do red? So I'm gonna mix violet with my orange, get kind of a red color. Will you be able to see it on the pumpkin? Yeah, yeah it shows up. <laughs> and what should I do? What other pattern should I do? Polka dot. Polka dot? Yeah. Which one? Uh, orange. Orange hat? Yeah. White polka dot? Or? Uh, maybe like a little bit of off-white, so it's not the same exact as the beard, because you just add like a hint of something into the white. There you go. Cute. <laughs> Looks like a mushroom. <laughs> oh my gosh, it does. You should add a little mushroom right here. Me? I mean, I guess I could. <laughs> <laughs> As the painter of this. <laughs> okay, so we have polka dots, we have stripes. What can we do with this brown? Hmm. Hmm. I mean, I'm thinking a classic hound's tooth. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, how do I do that? <laughs> what if I do like, um, like a diagonal Wait, stripe? It needs just a fabric patch with oh, like a yes. little bit of a and sewing. And I'll do blue. Yes. Just a little patch with a little stitching. Genius. Uh, thank you. Like here? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. And then, of course, like you can always go back and increase some color here. You won't be able to see. Corn is not very good. I think I did my tan background too dark, but I'm gonna be kind to myself and be like, okay, next time I know to do maybe like a lighter background. I don't think it's too dark. I really, it lends to the fall vibe. Well, I think what I might do along the edge is do a little bit of like a sewing pattern. Oh, I need it to be thinner though. So I'm, I think I'm just going to take like a thin line and do like, so, 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 so stitch, yeah. a stitch. Thank you. Um, let's get some white. That's not super watered down. And this just do stitch. It's actually really hard for me to follow a straight line when doing a Stitch pattern. I'm gonna do my best. And the nice thing about doing like line patterns like this is when there's a lot of something, it's easier to look back past the mistakes because there's so many. Got gotcha. you. Not so many mistakes. There's so <laughs> many things to look at. You know, why not both? <laughs> and like, you can also, you have black. If you wanted to outline any of these, you can. That would give it kind of more of an illustrative look. And I'm going to do my best to work around these feet here because I did not leave enough room for this pattern along the bottom. Oh, his patch needs tiny little white dots on it. Okay. 
Yeah. It's hard to do a continuous smooth line. It's perfect. It's perfect. Is that good? Yeah. <laughs> now you know it's a patch. <laughs> and maybe just a little shine on the shoes. <laughs> Sarah, it's so cute. Is it cute? Yeah. I feel like these gloves need to have a little bit lighter color. There we go. Okay, let's take off the tape and see how it is. Okay. Removing your taped border always helps. If you're not sure about a painting, wait till you see a clean edge. And then you're like, oh, hello. Yeah, instant classics. <laughs> uh, They're so cute. Look how cute they are. <laughs> <laughs> so this was just a fun little project that you guys can do and um, paint for Linda. Now, please remember, this is your painting. If you wanted to just do one and kind of give yourself a little bit more room to do details and stuff, do that. If you want to do them smaller, if I could go back, I would maybe make them a little bit shorter to give them some breathing room. But again, it's not a big deal. It's not enough to stop you from sharing your work and sending it to Linda because let me tell you, it's not about the perfect painting. That's not why we do this. We don't create perfect postcards because people only want the best paintings and that's going to make them feel better. It's really actually not about the postcard. It's about the fact that we're taking the time out of our day to make something for someone just to let them know that we're thinking about them. That's it. So um, please, I really hope that you grab a friend and, and paint this and, and, and send it. I really hope that you have fun with this. And uh, if there's anyone that you know of that could benefit from the Let's Make Art Matter program, just go to our website, letsmakeart.com, scroll to the bottom, hit on Let's Make Art Matter. What's that word? Not suggestion, nomination. There's a nomination form. So you can fill that out. Um, if you need any of this, these supplies, you can find them at letsmakeart.com. Thank you so much for painting with me. See you next time. Bye.